Welcome to season two of The Tech Show. I'm Sonia Gavankar, and this week we're throwing all our money out of our wallets and into an app. Yes, we're on the verge of no more cash and no more coins. And we tackle what we're going to do in a cashless society. Coming up on The Tech Show. Now it's time for the latest. Recently, Nigeria's Vice President Yemi Oshinbajo was in California to court U.S. tech investors for what he said could herald a fourth industrial revolution back home. But it isn't just Nigeria that is piquing the interest of tech giants. Last month, Google said it would open Africa's first artificial intelligence lab in Ghana's capital, Accra. It's all part of a push from Silicon Valley to both train people on the continent to give them the digital skills to succeed and to tap into an emerging market of young, connected Africans. Demographics are a key factor behind the drive. Africa's population is estimated to be 1.2 billion, 60% of them under 24. By 2050, the UN estimates the population will double to 2.4 billion. There's a clear opportunity for companies like Facebook and Google to really go in and put a pole in the sand, said Daniel Ives, a technology researcher at GBH Insights in New York. If you look at Netflix, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, where is a lot of that growth coming from? It's international. Salesforce reportedly has no plans to cut ties with a U.S. border agency over the separation of immigrant families, despite protests by hundreds of the cloud computing giant's employees. Recently, more than 650 Salesforce employees signed a letter urging CEO Mark Benioff to reassess the company's contract with U.S. Customs and Border Protection, worrying that such work makes them complicit in the inhumane treatment of vulnerable people. Salesforce announced an agreement in March to overhaul the the agency's recruiting process and manage border activities. A week earlier, more than 100 Microsoft employees signed a similar letter protesting their company's work with the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency and asked the company to cease operating with the agency. The moves are part of a pattern of actions the tech community has protested, including Muslim travel bans 1 and 2, the Nazi rally in Charlottesville, and the ban on transgendered people in the military. While CEOs Tim Cook and Mark Zuckerberg have directly criticized Trump, Benioff wrote Wednesday in a memo to Salesforce employees obtained by Bloomberg News, I'm opposed to separating children from their families at the border. It is immoral. I also wrote to the White House to encourage them to end this horrible situation. If we work employees want a burger while on business, the money is coming out of their own pockets. The global workplace startup told employees this week that the company will ban employees from expensing meals that contain red meat, pork, or poultry, according to Bloomberg News. The temporary office space provider won't offer meat in self-serve food kiosks or during events at many of WeWork's 400 locations worldwide. The company estimates its no-meat policy will save over 15 million animals by 2023, according to Business Insider, along with 16.6 billion gallons of water and 445.1 million pounds of carbon dioxide, the heat-trapping gas that alters Earth's climate. So what do you think about the company you work for banning meat? Removing all meat from cafes and cafeterias and that sort of thing. Um, I don't think I'd be a fan of that. I still think options are good, choices are good for people. Um, I don't think uh, vegetarian is wonderful, but I think that limits, um, you know, a menu for others. So wouldn't care for that at all. I'm a carnivore. I mean, I wouldn't support it, but I mean, if 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 workplaces want to remove meat products from their workplaces, I mean, that's up to the workplaces. Some people may not agree, but I like that WeWork wants to do their part. But I think if I caught the CEO out at a restaurant having a steak, I might have some questions. Coming up, we ditch the cash and plastic and pay with our watches, our phones, and even our faces, the moneymaker. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Over 70 years of experience in heart and aviation, the members of the Association of Flight Attendants know the realities of the aircraft cabin better than anyone. 
We don't just serve drinks, we save lives. We don't just negotiate contracts, we move major policy issues like the smoking ban, no knives on planes, clean water and safe food on board. The air we breathe matters and we stop the spraying of poisonous pesticides. The Association of Flight Attendants, stronger together, better together. Here's some of the best downloads to help you go cashless on this week's AppTech. The Cash App is Square's mobile payment app, which functions similarly to Venmo. The key distinction is that the Cash App gives you a free customized Square debit card that links directly to your account balance. Not only is the app free to download and use, but Square recently rolled out an expanded Cash Boost program for all users. These discounts include 15% off at Chipotle and Shake Shack, $1 off Subway or any coffee shop, 10% off at Chick-fil-A and Panera Bread, and 5% off at Whole Foods. It's like it pays for itself. If you are traveling outside North America, Zoom can send payments to people in 66 countries. They don't need the app or even a smartphone. They can simply pick up the cash in local currency at a nearby bank with a code and an ID. You do incur greater fees for this cross-border convenience. When you send money to Guatemala, for example, Zoom charges $4.99. If you use a bank account, and $6.99 for a credit card, along with whatever exchange rate advantage it may impose. The fees vary greatly by country. For payments in Finland, you pay nothing when using a bank account, but when using a credit card, you pay about 3% of the transaction amount. Level Up gives you the power to order ahead your coffee, lunch, afternoon snack, breakfast, second breakfast, and dinner with a single tap and have it ready when you get there. It also has loyalty partnerships with popular restaurants, so you earn rewards while you save time. And lastly, Facebook already knows everything about you, so why not hand over your debit card and integrate spending and sending money with your chat experience? Because most everyone is already on Facebook, you can send them money without waiting for them to sign up for an account elsewhere. They just need to add a debit card to be paid. Payment information is private. When you send money, all the recipient sees is the amount, your name, and your profile photo. Once a payment is accepted, it shows up in the bank within five business days. It's as simple as that. After the break, we're going to Sweden to see how they're streamlining just about everything into mobile payments. The Tech Show will be right back. Welcome back to The Tech Show. Right now, Americans hold and carry less cold, hard cash than they have for a long time. But we'll still be using it for quite a while. When it comes to the worldwide race to a fully digital wallet, though, Sweden is leading the way with only about 20% of transactions done in cash. Check it out. Sweden is the king of the card. There's not much you can't buy with a bank card these days. In fact, many shops don't take cash at all. When was the last time you used cash? Uh, the last time I used cash was uh, maybe the last year, in the summer. I carry very little cash just now, very little. Many of the shops don't uh, take cash, so, so you, have to, you have to have cards. By value, barely 1% of all transactions in Sweden involve cash. And if the amount of cash in circulation continues to decline at its current rate, the country could be completely cashless by 2025, something that other countries are taking keen interest in as their economies follow suit. One main advantage is, of course, is digitalized economies make our everyday life much more convenient. Uh, so I can do my financial services uh, in the, at 3 o'clock in the morning if I want to, and I don't have to stand in line in the bank office at, before, before they close at 3 o'clock. And we have also used this development to also deliver new services, new technologies that make everyday life much easier for all of us in the economy. But there are victims in Sweden's cashless society, like the vendors of Situation Stockholm, a magazine set up to provide its homeless workers with a source of income. In 2011, uh, more and more vendors came to us telling us people do not carry around cash. And we only had to go to ourselves, the staff of Situation Stockholm, realizing we never carry cash. 
and we just realized we have to fix this because otherwise their job will go away. So that started us working on cashless solutions. The latest solution is a mobile payment app called Swish, which lets people send and receive money in real time using their smartphones. I have um, my card here and they have a camera in their phones. They take a picture and then it come up on the display, situation Stockholm, which number and who it belongs to, and they just have to punch in their codes. Between them, card and mobile payments account for around 5 billion transactions every year in Sweden. But some here are concerned about the security risks. Criminality exists with cash, definitely, but also without cash, if you are talking about false identities, uh, possibilities to fool people with false cards, etc., etc. And then you have a development where these crimes are looked upon as transaction costs because you can't seriously combat them, you can't have the police to take them seriously. And for me that's a problem. Economies around the world are weighing up whether the benefits of going cashless outweigh the risks. And until we have more answers, all eyes are going to be on Sweden. Amazon opened its first cashless store in January in Seattle to start what they are terming just walkout shopping. Using a scan of your smartphone and a bunch of cameras and sensors, you can fill up on convenience items and go. Also in downtown Seattle, your money is no good at the cafes inside the Russell Investment Center, unless it's in the form of plastic. Jonathan Zhang, a professor of marketing at the University of Washington's Foster School of Business, who studies and consults with retailers on e-commerce and mobile payments, that Operationally, Starbucks could see advantages by abolishing cash because money is dirty. It slows things down, and without cash, there's less chance of theft. He also said he would expect that locations that cash represents only a tiny percentage of business anyhow, explaining they are not giving up much, maybe 5% or less, because the clientele is predominantly white-collar workers who tend to use plastic. And there's the issue. Cashless sounds great if you carry a credit or debit card, but for people who can't, it can feel like your neighborhood is shutting you out. Right now, only a few stores are testing going cashless in a few locations. But in Washington, D.C., Councilmember David Grosso has introduced a bill to require restaurants in his district to accept cash. His Cashless Retailers Prohibition Act aims to prevent excluding the 25% of D.C. residents who are unbanked or underbanked. Grosso further explained, by denying the ability to use cash as a payment, businesses are effectively telling lower income and younger patrons that they are not welcome. Amsterdam falafel shop owner Ariana Bennett said in an email to the Washington Post, not everybody is able to buy a smartphone. Not everybody is in a position where they can get a credit card. Not everybody is even in a position where they have a stable bank account to be able to use a debit card. But they are hungry too and have $10 in their pocket and they would like to spend their legal American form of tender, known as cash, with you. She finished with an age-old debate. As society and technology evolves, we must ask ourselves always, not just can we do it, but should we do it? So what do you think about going cashless? Tweet us at The Tech Show TV and let us know what you think. We've got a way to shop without spending money. Coming up after a quick break. More to come from The Tech Show in a minute. Non-attorney spokesperson. Attention. Have you been seriously injured or has a loved one been killed in a motor vehicle accident? Call 800-238-0788. You may be entitled to compensation. Personal injuries can happen at any point in your lifetime. And in a few seconds, you or a loved one may suffer debilitating injuries that could change your life forever. Call 800-238-0788. For a free consultation, you may be entitled to compensation. So, you've decided to go to college. That's cool. So, pop quiz. Which is a better way to earn your degree? Commute to college and fill your gas tank, get stuck in traffic, drive in bad weather, try to find a parking space, walk a half mile to class, or learn online at Independence University. You don't go to college, college goes to you. That's Independence. That's Independence University. And all your supplies, including a brand new laptop and tablet, are included with tuition. Independence U, for an independent you. 1-800-396-2076. 
When I say Italy, what comes to mind? Venice. Capri, oh my gosh, Capri was marvelous. The views, the cliffside views, or traveling to Sorrento. Pirello tours. Oh, Pirello tours, for sure. Pirello. Hi, I'm Steve Pirello of Pirello Tours. With over 70 years of tour experience to Italy, it's no wonder Pirello Tours is synonymous with travel to Italy. I think of the culture, I think of Pirello Tours taking me to all of the areas that were important to me. The history and to walk up to certain areas and touch a wall and think, well, this wall is like 3,000 years old. Being on a Pirello tour on our anniversary was better than anything I can remember ever on an anniversary. I personally approve every itinerary to ensure a stress-free, once-in-a-lifetime vacation. Salute! Call now for your free brochure and insider's guide. Call in the next 30 minutes and get this free $100 gift card. Call 800-219-0930, 800-219-0930. So you've decided to go to college. That's cool. So pop quiz, which is a better way to earn your degree? Commute to college and fill your gas tank, get stuck in traffic, drive in bad weather, try to find a parking space, walk a half mile to class, or learn online at Independence University. You don't go to college, college goes to you. That's Independence. That's Independence University. And all your supplies, including a brand new laptop and tablet, are included with tuition. Independence U for an independent you. 1-800-971-6972. So, you've decided to go to college. That's cool. So, pop quiz. Which is a better way to earn your degree? Commute to college and fill your gas tank, get stuck in traffic, drive in bad weather, try to find a parking space, walk a half mile to class, or learn online at Independence University. You don't go to college. College goes to you. That's Independence. That's Independence University. And all your supplies, including a brand new laptop and tablet, are included with tuition. Independence U for an independent you. 1-800-396-2076. So if we do go cashless, it'll be a new thing for us, but a throwback in terms of human society. Before we were printing and minting, bartering was the way people got things they couldn't grow, hunt, or make themselves. Back in 2009, when many people were perhaps cashless for different reasons, bartering among both businesses and individuals rose 30%. And since then, interest in bartering goods has only risen. And Austin, Texas has figured out how to use technology to swap things they don't need for things they do, while bringing neighborhoods closer together and having fun. You can see free items or services. Renee Stigler loves to use the Austin Rooster app. Wow. I mean, anything you're looking for, it's on there. Unlike other community-based sites, you can't buy or sell, only share, borrow, and barter. You know, just helping each other, people helping each other. For Stigler, she first used the app when she had a bee's nest in her backyard that she wanted to get rid of. She posted about her problem, and a beekeeper offered to take them for free. The beekeeper guy that came and took the bees from my backyard, which were a hazard, but they were useful to him. Stigler's also given away a mattress, traded fresh eggs for a 30 minute chair massage, and picked up two car seats for her grandbaby on the way. I don't want to spend a bunch of money on a good car seat, but here are these two light new car seats that came with their instructions, all the padding, they smell fresh, they're clean. Uh you know, she hardly used them, and now I can make use of them. Tally Saar created Rooster when she and her husband first moved to California. We just, we didn't know anybody, and, you know, we just knew that there were all these awesome, friendly people around us, and we kind of wished that we had a community. They started a mailing list and community potlucks, because for Saar, it's more about trading conversation and experiences than goods and services. Like, okay, maybe we can take this social media thing that kind of makes us all be in front of a computer and maybe we can make it into a positive where, where we're using the computer to get out of the house and meet someone. It's the very thing Stigler says she wants to see more of. They want everybody to be a community that helps each other and that's just such a beautiful idea. You know, who wouldn't want that? So we're going to swap gears for a moment for a very special celebrity tech. We are so lucky to have K-pop supergroup Monsta X with us today in advance of their U.S. tour. As you mom babies out there already know, Monsta X has made history this year with their new EP, The Connect, Deja Vu, which is one of the very few K-pop albums to crack the U.S. Billboard charts. So without further ado, here is Monsta X. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. What's up? Good to see you. How does it feel to land on three of Billboard's major charts? How do you feel, guys? We're on the Billboard. Uh, we were on the Billboard. It's a lot of to yeah. yeah. You, you know. Unbelievable. Yeah. And thankful, yeah. 
Talk about the so choreography. Cool. How intense are those rehearsals? The choreography is honestly very hard, but we, when we practice, we always think about the fan. Yeah. How do are they? We think about their face and their emotion. They're going to be very proud of us. Mm -hmm. so, our best. Yeah. Dance. So that's the reason that we are practice, practice. Oh Pract my God! Practice. Blah, 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 blah. Practice. Practicing yeah. so hard. You've traveled the world while performing for audiences in every language. Why do you think your music resonates with your fans? Because, because uh, we made we made for uh, always for fans. Mm -hmm. So mm, all all music is made for, is made for fans. fans. Mm -hmm. yeah. And our song has a message for uh, our fans and everyone. So we are connected mm. as one. What does each of you bring to the mix, and what is life like on the road? I am... Uh, cutie guy? Cutie guy? Cutie guy? Yeah. You're the most cute, energetic cute member, right? Yeah, all, yeah. all energetic. I don't think so, I don't think so, but okay. Cute, cute energy. Cute energy. Yeah, it's cute energy. Yeah. Yo, give me oh, a yeah. recommendation. Yo, you, I don't know you, about me. Uh, <laughs> Translate. You are. Okay. <laughs> oh, how dare you? Come on. Get up. <laughs> get up. Get up. No. Joking. Ge Joking. Genius. Come on. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm eating guy. <laughs> and right here, I think I'm. Um, mm. Cooking guy? Cooking guy, yes. Mm. Cooking guy. I am. Uh, no, no. Mom of the girl. <laughs> no, 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 just cooking no. <laughs> Not mom, just cooking that. Uh, I... What are you? Your dog. Vitamin. You're the Vi vitamin. Vitamin. Mm. Mm. Ah, vitamin. Yeah. 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 Very cheerful. Mm. And... Uh, uh, vitamin D. <laughs> <laughs> Approach you. Why? I'm C. Yes, uh, C okay. and D. D, okay. D. Uh, and sexy body. <laughs> what? Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. You have confidence? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm. What do you want to say to your fans or the Mon Babies here in the United States? So, it's been a year coming back to US, so we can't wait mm. to, yeah. you know, US is everything. I mean, schedule concert, interviews, it's such an honor doing this time, mm -hmm. and we'll come back as soon as possible. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking to us today, and enjoy that tour. Thank you Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Go to monstax-e.com for all the cities Monster X is hitting this summer. We're coming back with Take My Money after the last break. More of the tech show coming up. Now it's time for Take My Money, where this week a company tries to solve the biggest problem of air travel, actually carrying your own bag. So this guy clearly enjoys being the coolest kid in Terminal 3, but it only seems to work smoothly because he's the only person with one and there's like three other people in this fantasy airport. Coming from real world experiences of Newark, DFW, and LAX, sorry Ovis, I'm keeping my money and my bag in my hand. Thank you for joining us this week. Follow us at The Tech Show TV and join the conversation. Check you later.